All right, joining us on the show tonight is quite possibly one of the coolest characters to ever come out of professional wrestling. He's wrestled all over the world and is still going strong today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm another wrestling podcast welcome to Mr. Kevin Thorne. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us today. How's everything going? Oh, man, everything's going great, guys. Everything's going good. I'm uh, actually in uh, Nashville, Tennessee right now with... uh, uh, the natural Chase Stevens and uh, Les Briscoe at, at the moment. Uh, I was uh, e- eating dinner with them. Uh, we're doing a AWA uh, show here uh, in Nashville this weekend, uh, t- tomorrow night in Sparta and then Mount Pleasant. So uh, it's a good little weekend of wrestling. Sure. Uh, now, speaking of Tennessee, you grew up in Tennessee, uh, which has always been a hotbed for pro wrestling. Uh, did you watch wrestling as a child? And uh, if so, uh, who were some of your favorites? I did uh, watch wrestling as a child. Um, growing up in Tennessee, in Memphis, uh, you you know you had Channel Five, USWA, um, you know Lawler, Dundee, uh, you know Southern Southern wrestling at its finest uh, is what I grew up on. Um, uh, yeah, it was uh, eleven o'clock every Saturday morning, and um, you know uh, I wasn't really allowed to watch it uh, in my house because my dad's a Baptist minister. But I always snuck out over to my friend's house to uh, check out what was going on on the, you know, local wrestling um, channel. All right. Now, uh, wrestling was and is a very important part of your life. How was it that you actually found yourself inside the wrestling ring? How did you get from just being a fan to becoming a professional wrestler? Uh, I was working at a Gold's Gym uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, Sid Vicious used to work out there. And uh, one thing led to another. We became workout partners, and uh, he basically uh, asked me if I wanted to uh, uh, go to a ring and uh, learn how to wrestle, and uh, I did, and there you go, man. The rest is history. (laughs) Sure. When you began training to become a professional wrestler, was it uh, what you expected, or was it more difficult? Uh, it's kind of what I expected. Um, I always played football and everything else. Um, I was always real physical. So it, it, um, uh, I I mean, I needed that physicality in my life. I mean, that, that was, it was just a great outlet, you know, a great outlet to a number one entertain, but also a great out outlet to, you know, um, just be physical. Um, you know, so it it was, Mm -hmm. you know, it it was an easy transition for me for sure. Uh Okay. Now, not long after you started uh, wrestling, you broke onto the independent scene, and you uh, you were a character named Seven. Now, uh, you you mentioned earlier a little bit about your your father being a preacher. Uh, what was the idea behind this character, Seven? It was basically based off seven, uh, seven deadly sins. Um, you know. Um, Kind of Catholicism a little bit. Uh, the movie of Seven had just come out. Um, it just se- it seemed like a, a good way to transition into like a horror the mouth, uh, you know, kind of kind of character that was against you know uh, mankind and sin. All right. Uh, now, not long uh, after starting on the Indies, you started wrestling for OVW, which was WWE's developmental brand at the time. Uh, who were some of the people in your class at that time, and how big of a change was wrestling for OVW uh, compared to wrestling on the Indies? Uh, I mean, OVW was down, it was way more structured um, and stuff. Uh, you know, you you know, you're up at other classes at eight o'clock in the morning with Rip Rogers. Um, you know, uh, who was breathing down your neck, but teaching you so, you know, so much, um, you know, it, it definitely, definitely was a little bit different, you know, LVW really didn't care about promoting, you know, I mean, they had the Wednesday night wrestling for the OVW show, but the, you know, house shows weren't anything spectacular or anything. It was just, I mean, basically, you know, learning your craft kind of thing. Um, you know, you you were there to learn. Um, you know, it, it was uh, it definitely, uh, um, yeah. It was, I mean, just all around learning experience there, um, as far as as far as I was concerned. Okay. Now, um, you enjoyed a lot of success in OVW before being called up uh, into to SmackDown in two thousand 
four. Uh, when you got called up, you were called up as Mordecai. Now, this character was a little bit different than what you've been doing before. Uh, how much input did you get to have in the creative process, and uh, did they kind of give you an ultimate goal for this character? Uh, yeah, the ultimate goal was to go against Taker. Um, you know, um, you know, it was it was a little bit different. Um, you know, as far as we didn't concentrate on the seven deadly sins, as far as being seven, but I mean, it was kind of still, you know, holier than thou, uh, you know, rabid priests that came to save the world kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, that was definitely it. It could have gone a very, very, very far. Um, it just was a bad timing on my part. Mm. Now, uh, you also, also while in the WWE, you uh, wrestled as Kevin Thorne. Uh, this came about shortly after WWE relaunched ECW. Uh, were you a fan of the original ECW, and what were your thoughts on WWE's reboot? I mean, ECW was, uh, the original was, I mean, legendary. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, Paul Heyman, Tommy Dreamer, those guys, they, they just came up with a, just a, a concept and I mean, you know, got guys over, I mean, just ridiculously, you know, the way they did it. Um, you know, it wasn't your standard, you know, cookie cutter wrestling at the time, you know, uh, you know, I, I think people, you know, it, it's just like wrestling now that, you know, the fans evolve, you know, as a, as a fan, you had the wrestling buddies, you had this and that, uh, you know, you know, years prior to that and then you're coming up and you're you know you're getting in you know to your prime as a teenager you know you know and you wanted to see sex and you wanted to see violence you want to see all that stuff and and ecw brought that you know to life as you know as opposed to you know the the you know milk and cookie stuff that wwe was doing at the time all right now you came in to ecw as a, a vampire esque kind of gimmick, but uh, the rumor is is that you were supposed to be, come in as part of a group uh, consisting of Ariel and Gangrel. Uh, do you know what kind of happened in here? Why that never came to fruition? I, I have no idea. I wish it would have. I mean, I, I love. I mean, being with Ariel was awesome. Uh, you know, Shelley was phenomenal. Uh, I think Gangrel would have made it just over the top. And, and I still don't know why that is. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, uh, Gangrel's a you know very good friend of mine, and, and and I never understood it. I mean, to me, he's the OG of vampires. I mean, he you know, vampire warrior Gangrel. I mean, he he's he's it. I mean, him and Luna were the shit. I, I, I mean, so I I, I don't really know. Um, I I still don't have that answer. I think it would have been even that much cooler. Mm-hmm. I mean, we it, it would have been over the top cool. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Sure. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where you, you look back and you're like, I, I don't get it. Like this weekend I'm, I'm wrestling, you know, Gangrel. And I mean, he, he is, he's, he, he's the original gangster van, you know, uh, he's, he's it, you know? Um, I mean, still the coolest entrance music to this day. Uh, what, you know, one of the, one of the coolest individuals out there in the wrestling business. Um, you know, I, I mean, to have the opportunity to, to uh, tag with him and everything else would have been awesome. All right. Uh, now, also, uh, during this point in your career in ECW, uh, ECW originals were pitted against the new breed. Uh, how did the locker room get along at this point? And was there any tension between the originals and the new ECW wrestlers? Oh, no, man. The, the original guys were, I mean, the coolest cast on the earth. I mean, they still are. I mean, they, they, they knew, they knew that they, they built a franchise with ECW. They, I mean, you know, I mean, it was, I mean, you know, it, it was just fun. I mean, we never, you know, yeah, we beat the shit out of each other in the ring, but it was always a good time. I mean, it, it, it was, I mean, you know, it, it, they knew their stuff better than, better than anything. They knew how to get over it. They knew, knew how to make it easy, easy for us to get over by beating them up. I mean, so no, never. Now, many wrestlers go their entire career without having their WrestleMania moment. Uh, you, however, got one during WrestleMania 23 in Detroit, Michigan. 
what were your personal thoughts about that match and your experience wrestling for nearly a hundred thousand people? I, man, I just remember looking, walking out the curtain and looking around and being like, "Holy shit, this is insane!" Um, you know, to a sea of people, and then walking back to the back and. You know, knowing now that I've met the future president of the United States and Donald Trump, I mean, you know, I mean, it was insane. Uh, I mean, you, 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 you can't, I, I mean, surreal moments in life that you don't ever think you're going to be blessed with. And I, you know, I got one. Sure. Uh, now, we mentioned before that during your time in the WWE, some ideas were pitched to you that uh, never materialized. Uh, what are some other ideas that maybe never saw the light of day? Was there anything that they had uh, any ideas for you? Uh, I mean, nothing ex extraordinary by any means. I mean, no. Nah. All right. Now you've spent a long time in the, in the wrestling business. What would you say is the single greatest piece of advice that you've received during your career? Uh, Shawn Michaels, uh, one time in uh, Milan, Italy told me to not be so nice. Uh, you know, maybe not be so yes or no, sir. And, uh, maybe be, you know, more of a, a dick sometimes, um, when it came to managing my career. And that's probably the one piece of advice I, I wish I would have, uh, uh, ran with more than I, than I did, you know? All right. Uh, now, Kevin, do you still keep up with uh, what's going on today in the world of pro wrestling on TV? I think there's just so much happening. Uh, is there any anything that you watch? Or st uh, are you still in tune with it? No, not uh, not enough. Yeah. Um, I, you know, my son's in sports. My my daughter's in sports. I've I've got so much going on that it's it's hard to it, it is hard to keep up with. I mean, I try to watch the stuff. Uh, you know, like the Wyatts. Uh, I love them. Uh, I mean, when I have a chance to watch, uh, you know, the new day, you know, some of those guys, they do some great stuff, but I mean, trying to keep up with it anymore, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of time I just don't have. Absolutely. Now you mentioned Gangrel earlier and it seems like you, uh, you really enjoy his work, but, uh, as a wrestling vampire, people probably tend to compare and contrast your portrayal against you know, all the other wrestling vampires. Uh, where do you think you rank amongst all of the uh, professional wrestling vampires out there? Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, if you're not a mark for yourself, who you mark for, I'm number one, but uh, the rest are pretty cool, too. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, now, Kevin, I know you're still very active on the independent scene. Uh, you'll be appearing along with Road Warrior Animal, Simon Dean, Bull James, and with uh, John and Chad from the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling podcast at WrestlePro on Saturday night, July 23rd in Union, New Jersey. Uh, that evening, WrestlePro presents a card where the fans book the matches and where, uh, where you will be facing Bull James for the very first time. Uh, tickets are available at WrestlePro Online com or by visiting the two man power trip of wrestling's Facebook page. Uh, what can you tell us about facing Bull James for the very first time? Any thoughts about that match? Uh, I, I hope he's gotten in a lot better shape since he left next. Cause I'm going to kick the shit out of him. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, you know, he, he likes carrying big chains to the ring and all that. And I work out with big chains. So I, I have no problem throwing those around his fucking neck and throwing him over the top rope. So, uh, you know, there you go. It's uh, it, it it it'll be it'll be fun. I've never uh, you know, uh, uh, House of Hardcore in Philly. I had the opportunity to get in the ring and uh, punt bull in the face a couple times and and Billy Gunn, but uh, you know this time it's just me and him. So I, I look forward to the chance to uh, beat on him a little bit, and I hope he has. Uh, he's he's looking forward to the chance of beating on me a little bit. All right, favorite vampire movie or TV show of all time? The Lost Boys, no question. All right, thoughts on uh, Paul Heyman? Uh, genius. Uh, what would the title of your autobiography be? Well, fuck. <laughs> favorite thing about Indiana? Uh, that Mike Pence is going to be the uh, vice president with Trump and he'll no longer be governor. Okay, thoughts about The Undertaker? Uh, uh, one of the coolest guys I've ever met. 
All right, can you sum up your wrestling career in one word? Well, fuck. <laughs> uh, Shelly Martinez. Hot as fuck. <laughs> Great. Uh, Kevin Thorne, uh, where can people find uh, find you on social media today and keep up with you? Uh, the Kevin Furtig. Um, no longer Kevin. Th- well, I'm still Kevin Thorne, but uh, the Kevin Furtig, my real last name, uh, everything else um, on uh, Facebook. I have a page, uh, Kevin Thorne Furtig, um, and Instagram, the Kevin Furtig too. All right. Is there any and place I, that people can get, you know, merchandise or anything like that? Uh, go to uh, Two Man Power Trip, uh, their website. Uh, they're kind of doing all my stuff because I'm an idiot on the computer. <laughs> um, so they, they've they've kind of taken over and helping me out. So uh, the two man power trip dot com, uh, I think it is that uh, you know eight by tens and all that stuff, and then Pro Wrestling Tees um, uh, has a shirt site for me too. Great, well, Kevin. You know, thank you so much for your time. It was a uh, great talking with you. Hopefully, to have hope to have you uh, on the show again uh, sometime in the near future. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for talking to me. Um...